What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video I'm going to share with you what I learned from a 72 hour work hackathon. You guys are brand new to the channel if you're into anything from tech entrepreneurship coding startups all that good stuff make sure you guys like share and subscribe it really helps me stay motivated to keep making this content for you guys and that's all we talk about here on this channel so a couple weeks ago i had a chance to be a part of a 72 hour work hackathon and i want to share with you guys the five things that i really took away from it because it was a cool experience i work at a global company so i got to participate with a global team so i had like maybe eight to ten people on my team and we were for the most part all in different countries so it was really cool to get that experience of developing and collabing with people from all over um, that i've never met in person before but again you know with everybody working from home and working in a virtual office it's presented a lot of opportunities for people to do and try new things so my company wanted to try a virtual hackathon and i just want to share with you guys my takeaways from it the first big thing is accountability um, because, you know, I guess it's the same with any anything when you're collabing with a group of people. There's always going to be somebody that, that doesn't participate or that doesn't do as much. So, you know, that was, of course, um, an issue because some people weren't technical. But the thing about it is in a hackathon, it forces everybody to, to use their skills and their creativity the best way they can to still assist the rest of the team in putting some type of product together. And there's a need for everybody in a hackathon, even if you're not a developer. So there's always gonna be those things where you're kind of having people that don't come back after your initial like meeting with the team. So that happened with us. We had a few people who came to the initial meeting that we had for our team and then never came back until we presented our product like three days after the kickoff meeting. So, you know, that, you know, it happens, um, but you just don't know what you would have gotten if they were there to contribute ideas and actually just put in effort and things like that. So, you know, accountability is always going to be a thing when you're doing a hackathon or some sort of um, collaboration. The second thing is that the time zones definitely presented an interesting challenge. So, for example, I had some teammates who were in Minsk, Russia, and I had some teammates who were in Mexico, and I had some teammates who were in the UK, and then myself and one other teammate were based in Michigan in the Detroit office in the US. Not only to work virtually with people that you've never met before, but to communicate with different styles of english in different ways of expressing things in varying levels of technical knowledge and technical experience product building different varying levels of industry knowledge it really made for a, a interesting communication experience learning experience because on top of all that we had our time zone differences so we also had to schedule all of our meetings based on what time you know would be most effective and efficient for everybody so, you know, Minsk obviously presented the, the biggest challenge because they were furthest away from everybody. Um, United States and Mexico are in the same time zone for the most part. And then our UK office was, I think, like another five hours ahead of us, something like that. So, you know, we, we were having meetings anywhere from like 4 a.m. my time to like 8 p.m. my time or maybe even later. And then towards the very end, we were just working all night uh, just because it didn't matter what time it was. We just had to get the product out. So the time zones really made it interesting. The chance to communicate with people from all over the world and again, just learn how to effectively work with them and collab with them over the internet was um, a really cool learning experience. All right, so number three kind of piggybacks on number two and it's the fact that planning is difficult. Um, and again, it's because we're all working on different time zones. Like I said, technical experience, everything Everything is varying communication is varying and different and so you know and everyone thinks differently as well so you know so some of our teammates who are more experienced technically and who have been in the business longer they had one idea of what they thought our product should be or what it, they should look like what it should look like and again they were all the way in Minsk Russia so at the same time they needed to get they were already off work by the time we had our first meeting we were all just starting our day over here um, even in the UK, it was like early afternoon, but for them, it was already, they were already off work and, you know, so they were ready to just kind of come up with an idea really quickly so that they could get off work and start working on that and go to sleep. So that obviously makes planning difficult when they're going to go off and start coding something and, you know, you could, the rest of the team could be dependent on whatever they're doing, but at the same time, we can't bug them all night and send them teams messages and call them all night long so you know we had to go kind of take our own 
like not separate products, but our own ideas to work on. And then we found a way at the very end in the deployment process to bring everything together to make one final product that we put together so that we basically weren't relying on them and depending on them. And obviously we could let them kind of work more independently, but the rest of us still could keep ourselves busy and have you know, work to do. So again, splitting the responsibilities and tasks and breaking everything down, the big picture of the project all the way down to what everybody's working on. Um, you know, it was difficult, but we got it done and it ended up being really great. Um, we got second place, by the way, in the hackathon. So um, it all ended up working out pretty well. So these are just the things that, you know, if I was to do this again, which we're supposed to in October, um, you know, it's just feedback. Number four is time. So with a 72 hour hackathon, it's actually longer than most hackathons uh, a hackathon is usually like 24 hours which is kind of insane um because that's a that's a lot of, of work to just cram into a day depending on what you're trying to do um but yeah so we had 72 hours and that's not a ton of time but it's more than what you know you're usually given but still with 72 hours obviously going from idea to final deployed product plus a presentation and, and a business value proposition and a basically a pitch deck and slide deck and all that good stuff it's a lot of work to to really get done um in 72 hours times especially challenging when you're trying to deliver the things that you agreed upon on the first day at your initial kickoff meeting so you're going to come up with all these ideas and say yeah we should do this we should do that and like yeah this would be great but as you start building and you start, you know, having late nights and running into issues and not understanding certain things or realizing certain things might not be as feasible as you thought or more difficult than you thought, then time is going to definitely force you to really consider what you can actually deliver out of the things you said you were going to deliver. So number five is, is a really, I think, good one to recap, um, which is basically you can't be afraid to pivot. You cannot be dead set on one idea just because you think it's a great idea, you think it's going to win, it's going to get first place. Like You have to focus on what's realistic, what's actually doable, what's feasible for you and your team. What does everybody understand? What can everybody contribute to? And what can you guys realistically get done? And also, you have to have your your business proposition stuff there. So you have to have your business people working on um, slides and presentations and the pitch and something like there's always something for someone to do, even if it's not technical stuff. So those people that we talked about in step one, the accountability stuff, if they're not technical people, they can still be helping get the value proposition down. You know, what are people saying about the product? Uh, what would they, would they use it? Would they like something like that? What's their problems that they're facing right now? Um, you know, basically customer validation, customer discovery, building a pitch deck, uh, working on the pitch, the presentation, answering the business questions that the judges might ask, like all that good stuff is things that people who aren't technical can be helping do. So there's always something to be done, but obviously there's a lot of challenges presented when you're doing a 72 hour hackathon, but it's a great learning experience because I think every single time I've done a hackathon, I've learned a lot in a small amount of time. It kind of just forces you to jump in head first and see what you can learn and what you can get accomplished. And so, um, if you have the opportunity to get into a 24 hour hackathon, a 72 hour hackathon, or just working with people that you don't know, I think it's a really great learning experience. You're going to all pull from each other's different experiences with development and tricks and all this good stuff and tools. So yeah, I, th I think you guys should definitely consider it, but I just wanted to share with you my five takeaways from my 72 hour hackathon. So if this was helpful guys, um, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Make sure you like the video. And um, also, if you're brand new to coding, I think about going to a coding bootcamp pretty soon. Check out the description box down below for my free intro to coding bootcamp course. I'm giving away pretty much all the stuff I wish I would have known going to coding bootcamp and all that costs is your email address. There's also a link for a private Facebook group where I give away all my other resources that I don't leave in the descriptions of all these videos. So again, guys, thanks for watching. This is Darren Dev. I'll see you guys next video. All right, peace.